down in less than one. And there's a batch on the exchange, and Dillon is eaten up alive, and the Lions get a much-needed stand. Wow. You have the entire quarter break. You go back, and A.J. Dillon just goes the wrong way. Everybody's blocking. Jordan Love is anticipating him getting the ball on the right side. You can see from where the linemen are blocking. He just went the wrong way, KB. I, I just, that's just a brutal mistake there, especially when you had the entire commercial break coming out into the second quarter to make sure everyone knew the play call. Yeah, that was a chance to really put the hammer down, but the Lions get a big play and a little help. And now from their own 14, they will try to get the run game going. There's Montgomery, who going to get a couple for Kingsley Enagbari takes care of him Well, the Lions we talked about Dan Campbell told us that's the one thing that's got to go away after a four turnover game on Sunday another run it is Montgomery Interesting. the Lions are going with the run game on early downs a little more than they usually do yeah and I think the element you know I think there's this this misnomer out there that the run game is what allows you to be such a good play action team and I, and I think Ben Johnson's offense historically has kind of flipped that upside down the threat of their play action the ability to stay in what they call 50 50 downs where it's not a clear pass or run allows them to be so multiple and puts the pressure on defenses to have to play both I'd like to see them get back into early passing downs as opposed to all the runs third and run Montgomery fights forward he's got the first down Well, Joe Barry and this Green Bay defense playing well shorthanded today. And Ben Johnson told us, I have the utmost respect for him. I, I have trouble calling games against him. He does a great job at disguising things. Absolutely. And he said he always has a wrinkle for me. He always has something that hasn't showed up on tape, whether it's a new run pressure or a third down blitz or just changing between zone and man and just changing the looks on the quarterback. They both were highly complimentary of one another, like you said. And so far, they've held up great. Stay with Montgomery again. A little hop step and a big hold. Upended Montgomery, but a nice run. Good blocking, too. He's going to pick up nine. And we get another injured lion on the play. It's Frank Ragnow, the center. One of the best in the league. Lions are playing. A little shorthanded on that very good offensive line today. Jonah Jackson is out with a wrist injury. Colby Swords. The Here are the Lions looking for a little something. Down 20 to 6 coming near side. Got a catch and a first down. It's Malcolm Rodriguez, the linebacker who's been moonlighting a little bit as a fullback, but he makes the catch. Well, that's pretty impressive. I mean, that was just gone protection. He was just a Fast out of the backfield, added him into the route concept, and that's a great hands catch there in the flat. That's pretty impressive for a linebacker. So Malcolm Rodriguez doesn't have any career interceptions, but now he's got a catch, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Frank Ragnow is back in the game at center. Good news for Detroit, too. He only missed one play and a first and ten. Got stands in, delivers. On the run, St. Brown on the board. His first catch of the day, and he is... Their top receiver. He's got six 100 yard games on the year. That's the most in the NFL. You know, I think the part that, you know, just studying him this week for this game, you know, you've seen all the numbers, you've seen the stats, obviously, since he's come into the league. But what really stood out to me is for a guy who's not overly big in stature, Kev, he's one of the best in the NFL at contested catches. Bodies around the target, fighting through contact. And there's really not a whole lot this guy can't do and just continues to improve. Montgomery again, spin move, breaks another tackle, and working hard for Montgomery for a yard. Green Bay all over it. And up comes third down. So they're giving Montgomery bulk of the carries today. We told you about usually a split with he and Jameer Gibbs. But Montgomery's been the workhorse. 
And nine carries, 27 yards for him. Third and three. Goff over the middle, high, and that could have been intercepted, but it's incomplete. Laporta, the intended receiver, and now a fourth and three, and the Lions thought they might think about going for it, but they're going to send out the punt team. Yeah, and this is just a flat-out miss by Jared Goff. He had outside leverage, Laporta, on the little basic in cut, and you can just see the ball out of his hand. It didn't come out right, and goes off the extended right hand of Laporta. Goff's just... He's a little off. You know, we've mentioned the turnovers. He did a great job last week of battling through, throwing three picks, and came up big there in the fourth quarter, leading them back. But he's got to settle in. You've got to hit those easy passes at this level. Jack Fox punted away. Low sinking kick. Jaden Reed calls fair catch. And so the Packers will take over. It's been there for back to that third down. This is just a simple drive concept. They use a switch release. Look at the leverage Sam Laporta gets when they pass off the little sit. Here's his read, McDuffie. He sits down on Riemann. This is an easy, easy read. And the reason it's wide open, look at the attention Amar Ross St. Brown gets between Quay Walker and Owens on the other side. That's why there was no hole player in the middle of the field. You can't miss those shots. Wasted opportunity for the Lions. Now it's Jordan Love's turn on the fake again. Gets it out to Dillon, who's wide open in the flat. Tries to leap, and he's still on his feet across the 30. A.J. Dillon is not supposed to be able to do that. He's 250 pounds. <laughs> yeah, this is usually the Aaron Jones role, is the open field. He's Dillon's kind of known as the big body bruiser, but he has great hands. It's something that he's gotten a lot better at since he came out of school. and. Nice job there taking the hit in the air by Anzalone and man, that's hands to the face, right? If I'm if I'm Green Bay, I'm saying, hey, that's hands to the face. I guess officials don't deem it a forcible contact. And movement. Encroachment number 90. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. That's on Quinton Bohanna. Well, let's remind you again, A.J. Dillon is 250 pounds. I mean, you going to tackle that? <laughs> well, one guy went low, one guy went high, and he was able to defeat them both simultaneously. That, that was pretty impressive in the open field by the big back. Here is Dylan up the middle and a short game. Well, Jordan Love, think about the beginning of the year. Aaron Rodgers moves on. It's Love's first year starting after a little scuffle here. I think it's important to point out, as you see Dobbs run this big cross route on the basic, I think it's important to point out, here we are about halfway through the second quarter. They've only attempted, Green Bay, they've only attempted three third downs. What that tells us is their aggressive play on first and second down, picking up first downs, is the best style of offense. You stay in play action, your run play pass is more effective. I love this plan by Matt LaFleur. Taylor, good blocking on the edge, and Taylor gets inside the 25. And a rare running play, but I think that's the other part of it, right? Green Bay, there, there's been no pressure on Love. We talked about the front of Detroit. They haven't gotten home. Absolutely, and they're a, they're a better pass pro team at this stage of the season than they are run blocking, but it's the threat of the first and second down pass that really softens up those linebackers. Those interior guys get into more pass rush mode when they're used to seeing first and second down pass so often. The run now becomes secondary and is a lot more effective. Four-man rush here. Love going far side of the field and incomplete. Try to get it to Jaden Reed. And now it's third and five.
Love. Here comes Aiden Hutchinson. Gets rid of it. Going end zone. Bodies collide. Watson, the intended receiver. I don't see a flag. And Matt LaFleur on the field arguing. He and Cam Sutton collided. No foul for pass interference. Both players were playing the ball and their feet became entangled. You just got Four the explanation. Down. Yeah, and I, I think it's the right call. I think you can clearly see Watson and Cam Sutton, obviously much to the <laughs> dismay of Matt LaFleur. I, I think that's just an example of two guys getting tangled feet. You heard the official come on the loudspeaker and make the call. I think in this case that's the right call. And Great stop here by Detroit, forcing the field goal attempt. And now it's the rookie, Anders Carlson, from 43 yards out. And the kick is good. The Green Bay Ad family today. And Greg, it's kind of like we're seeing these young Packers, you know, maybe what they can be in the future. This has been something else. Yeah, we, we knew they were talented. They were just inexperienced and a little inconsistent. But I think on days like today, there's almost an ignorance is bliss kind of idea. These young players, they don't really know what they don't know. They play free, they're confident, they're dynamic, and we've seen a bunch of guys that haven't played a whole lot of reps all year come out and play really well. Here's Dorsey looking for a little spark on the return. So the Packers have a lot of energy. The Lions don't have much. EA, your report. Well, I'll tell you this. And just watching the offense as they take the field, there's really no panic and nobody's super emotional. But remember, we talked to Dan Campbell this week and asked him about the short week. And he said in his mind, the biggest key, team has the most energy and plays with the most detail will win the game from the attitude standpoint. We have to play sound football. Obviously, they've struggled with that. And as he said, and you've said it too, Kevin, they were fortunate to get out of that game against the Bears. They've got to clean this up and see if they have a little juice out there. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they did overcome a 12-point deficit with three minutes to go in the game last week, and they got some work to do here, down by 17. But obviously, a lot of time to go. Hey, reload, 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 reload. Yeah, they're reloading it. This guy started high and then came back down into the box. And he's got time. Now, can't find in one pocket, breaks down, and Goff is tripped up. Right around the line of scrimmage, see if it goes down as a sack or not. It's Gary, and should be his second sack of the day. Yeah, this was cool to see. Jonathan Owens, see him, he's in the back. This originally was going to be a pass, and you heard him say, kill, kill. He then slowly, slowly started walking down. Listen to the center. Hey, reload, 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 reload. It goes back to a pass, because he's getting out. It's really good quarterback center working together. Obviously didn't work out, but that's the mechanics of the play. Second down, blitz coming, Goff backpedaling, throwing to nowhere. Well, these Packers are dialing up everything today, shorthanded. It is working. Quay Walker on the pressure that time. These wrinkles, they weren't prepared. Again, short week. Every coach goes through the, the balance of, all right, we want to make sure we game plan specific to our opponent. We don't want to overwhelm guys, especially guys that haven't played a lot, but give credit to Joe Barry. His defense has come ready to go, and they played well. Third and ten. Pressure again on God. That may have been tipped at the line, and it's incomplete. And now there's a penalty in the secondary, so hold everything. Goff was under duress again that time. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, number 58 defense. Five yard penalty automatic. First down. There you see right now McDuffie one on one in the slot against the rookie tight end Laporta. Let's see the contact. He's going to come out of it. Yeah, I don't know. That one seems. I'd love, I'd love, I'd love to, there we go, Joe Barry likes it. Joe Barry did, he, did he initially. Did, he liked it, and then he said, oh, my God, we had him. But uh, I don't know, it seemed like light contact there, but obviously the official thought it was enough to get the board on the ground. Reload, reload. Seven, seven. 180, was that? Gibbs up the middle, and Gibbs taken down from behind. Gary got him. He's having a whale of a first half. On a nice tackle, could have been an even bigger run. A reminder coming up at the half, Grammy nominated Jack Harlow. Headline of the thing. Second and four. <laughs> Maybe a yard. It'll be a third down and three. This Lions offense came into today, number two in the NFL. 
sixth in scoring. I mean, they are an explosive group. Speaking of that, fifth in the NFL in explosive plays. They've been limited today. The pressure from Green Bay. Amara St. Brown, one of the best in the league, just one catch. This is where they go to them, though, on third down. Four man pressure. Goff stands in, has a man wide open. It's Raymond, who's got his first catch of the day, and a biggie. Down to the Green Bay 40, he goes, and the drive continues. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the coverage was here some of the guys on the field are playing underneath zone and everyone else is playing man nobody runs with Raymond and he's wide open there on third down that's a clear miscommunication there by the secondary they go tempo here yes. pressure coming and throws it away yeah so they thought Green Bay jumped and they snapped it thinking they had a free play but the officials didn't think they were in the neutral zone and now they're deciding, was that intentional grounding? Can you imagine the turn of events? Let's yeah, so see. watch. So they got a little movement there by Slayton. So he quick snaps it. But he didn't actually cross the neutral zone, so it was not a free play. Yeah, that's intentional grounding. He wasn't outside the pocket. grounding number 16 offense you get penalized yourself you have to make sure as the center there Frank Rag now the center you have to make sure they clearly get in the neutral zone if you're gonna quick snap it third and 12 Goff underneath St. Brown long way to go down to the 35 is gonna be short by four yards of a first down and now think, how aggressive are they well, I think I think you're exactly right I think that's just enough to make Dan Campbell be aggressive, and I think he's going to keep his offense. He knows he needs a spark here, and I almost wondered to at least let this down to the two-minute warning. The play clock, they have enough time here to let this down to the two-minute warning. I don't know if I'd snap it on the plus side of it or not. Maybe make him jump. Try to get him to jump. Take the decision into the two-minute. No, they're going to get four. Fourth and four. Pressure on God. Hit as he throws. Ball is loose. Sitting on the ground. Doesn't matter. It'll be Green Bay taking over. They say now incomplete, but the Packers will grab the football on a fourth down stop. Preston. Michigan sports, but their Lions coming in with first place with an 8-2 record are getting beat up by these Packers here today who have been surging of late and playing Arguably their best game so far this year up 23 to 6 two timeouts left in their football here with 158 to go in the half Here's Jordan Love slings it out to Reed and Walker brings him down gonna be a loss Actually, that was Joseph not Walker on that fourth down play. You like the decision to go for it I did I, I thought it was the right decision 35 yard line. That's a long kick Already missed an extra point. I don't hate the call. I would have liked to have seen him. Maybe you get him a free five yards. Make him jump. Get up to the line. Take the two-minute warning. Catch your breath. Reset. Make sure you have your best gotta have it play. Instead, they ran up, snapped it, and the pressure of Green Bay has been the storyline of this first half. Second down. Here's Dylan up the field. A gaping hole for AJ Dylan rumbling in Alliance territory. And a first down and a run of 17. Yeah, but watch the two high safeties. A little bit of a light box here, anticipating maybe more of a pass approach. But now with the ball at midfield, Green Bay didn't want to give Detroit an extra possession. But now under a minute, they can go into a more up-tempo two-minute and steal points. Love going far side of the field. Knocked away. Brian Branch with a nice play on Jaden Reed. With 52 seconds to go in this first half. Which so far, Greg, has been the polar opposite of when they played in week four. Because in that game, the Lions just crushed Green Bay in the first half. And essentially, the game was over. It's been the reverse. Yeah, and they ran for over 200 yards in that game, Detroit did. Now you find yourself down here trailing to some, at some, you know, to some capacity here at the half. And the ability to rely on that play-action run game really goes down. Turns into a drop-back game for Detroit. Second and ten. Love Taylor out of the backfield makes a catch and Anzalone wrestles him down right away It'll bring up third down with 47 seconds to go in this half 
Love just looks comfortable. We did his week one start in Chicago, which they won. He looks like a different guy. No question. And we walked out of Soldier Field in week one thinking, all right, they might be on to something here. He had some tough sledding there the next few weeks, but we talked about it at the top of the show. He's playing his best ball here late in the season, and that's exactly where you want to peak. Third down and six. Love can't find it away. Pressure throws on the run and incomplete. That time the Lions finally get home with some pressure on Love and likely will force a punt here. And it was the late pressure that forced the throw away, but it was a great job by the back seven linebackers and secondary of Detroit matching that combination. And you know what? They're not going to punt. They're going to go. I almost wonder now, do they try to make them jump? This you'd hate to give Detroit a short, relatively short field here, knowing they get the ball coming out of halftime. This is this is a big gamble now by Matt LaFleur. And they need six yards. I just can't. Yeah. I just cannot see this ball getting snapped. Yeah, the way the first half has gone. There's a penalty. Number 10. And that's on the delay of game. And you think about penalty. the way. Listen. Fourth down. First half's gone yeah, so well. Why hand Detroit? Yeah. No. There is under. Half the field. No circuit. And you know what's always the tip for anyone watching at home, sitting on your couch, hang, hanging out? Anytime an offense starts going into like these bizarre shifts and motions, it's like the ultimate tell that that ball's not getting snapped. Like no one's motion or shifts ever look like they do on a no play. It's like the fake throw to third, throw to first, <laughs> and the baseball, does it ever work? Yeah, uh, 12 year old youth baseball, I've seen oh. it work. <laughs> it's a different level. So they will punt it away as Whelan. End over end, high kick, and fair catch at the 16 by Khalif Raymond. What is coming up on the Verizon halftime show? The time of their life, Kurt. Thanks very much. Gronk spiking footballs. How do you not have fun hanging with Gronk? He's like the fun uncle at Thanksgiving, right? You just can't wait for him to come over. So the Lions here, 35 seconds left, but all three timeouts. See how aggressive they are. Goff over the middle and incomplete. He had a man, Laporta, just a little in front. Second down. Yeah, the reason it's in front, he would love to have held that one more half count. But Preston Smith is in his face. Watch the timing when Preston Smith gets in his face. He comes underneath. He has to get the ball out, but he hasn't quite cleared Quay Walker yet. That's why the coverage and the rush go hand in hand. And that's why. A lot of pressure on Goff, as you see. Back to throw going far side for St. Brown, who ran a different route. And this Lions offense just a little discombobulated here in this first half. Goff was not under pressure, so if you're thinking intentional grounding. Yeah, and they just say that Carl Chepper's announcing to the crowd, just letting them know. Now things, it's amazing how, many, how much strategy there has been here the last minute of this game, KB. Now think, you're Green Bay, you have two timeouts, it's third and ten. How aggressive does Ben Johnson want to be here, potentially stopping the clock, punting it back to somewhere around midfield? and Green Bay getting an extra possession. So, interesting call here. Penalty flies. Goff stands in, delivers, it is caught, and that's a first down to Laporta. Pending the penalty. With 20 seconds to go in this half. Illegal shift offense. Well, All players did not get set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Just... We just haven't seen. I mean, we've seen little glimpses. We called that Baltimore Ravens game, which kind of got away from Detroit a few weeks back. But all in all, this offense is just so used to performing at such a high level, being so efficient. Just uncharacteristic performance here in the first half is really the only way to put it. And the Green Bay pressure, you hit it, really been the story of this game. 20 seconds left, third and 15 going to hand it off here and now flea flicker maybe not Goff standing in throwing deep near side and Jameson Williams just never turned around we get a penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage so let's see what this is uh, 
number 74 of the offense was illegally downfield. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is fourth down. Yeah, it was Kayade Owashika. And it would have been incomplete <laughs> anyway. So 13 seconds left. They'll have to punt it away. And it's been a first half offensive disaster for the Lions. Offense has been stagnating. They've got two fumbles, one return for a touchdown. And they've allowed constant pressure. Now Jack Fox with a big punt. High, short, fair short. catch. It. Very short. Fair catch call for right around the 45 yard line with only five seconds left. You know, it's, it's funny. That's one of those situations, KB. It doesn't happen a lot. Depending where you fair catch that ball, you can attempt a free kick. Yep. We haven't seen many of them over the years. I actually had one in a game I played over in London. We played Tampa my last year in Carolina. We attempted a free kick. We missed it. Thought maybe they'd give it a shot here. It's a little too far. Yeah, you think about a kickoff, though. It's it's close. Instead, try for the old Hail Mary. Love underneath. Reed slides down. Now they get a timeout in time. Let's see. It looked like he got down in time before it went down to zero. And he did. There should be at least a second or two on the clock. Green Bay call timeout with one second on the clock. Please set the game clock to one second. Let's watch. All right, let's take a look. So obviously this is mandatory get down, catch, down. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of time. There might have been two seconds. Well executed there. And now they'll take the kick. Yes, they figure. But again, KB, think about this. They gained 10, but the field goal snaps eight. But now you have to kick it with a rush. I don't know. I, it's an interesting decision, free kick versus field goal. But nonetheless, this will be a 63-yard field goal. His long is 52. He hit from 57 in the preseason. Carlson drills it. He's got a chance on the way. Taken by Raymond, who is back to receive for Detroit. Why not? Now Raymond looking for a miracle kick return. Breaks a tackle. Khalif Raymond still on his feet. Had some blocking. Had a heck of a return. Got the crowd excited. But that'll be the end.